Are you ready to step into the future of education? Because in 2024, the landscape is changing and evolving, which presents opportunities, but also challenges. In today's episode, we're going to explore how to help you nail your next interview while thinking about the future and where we're headed. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we help leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. It is without question that the landscape in education has been changing and evolving. Ever since coming out of the pandemic, there have been lots of challenges, lots of issues, and lots of things that have inhibited our ability to really produce the outcomes and the experiences that we want for kids. But what I'm confident in is I'm confident in the professionals, the educators, the leaders, the communities that we serve to be resilient, to stay innovative, to stay focused on students, scholars, and their success. And the more that we focus on thinking about how 2024 and beyond is going to be an opportunity for us to grow together, learn together, experience new things, new opportunities, the horizons are bright. The opportunities are immense. And so we want to help to explore in the context of helping you as an educator, helping you as somebody who wants to give back, serve, support children, support communities, build communities and cities into better, more democratic, more inclusive, more equity-based places. We wanna help you in how to thrive in your interview, thinking about these new and interesting and unique challenges in 2024. So in today's episode, we're gonna explore three strategies that we want you to think through and anticipate questions in your next interview around these types of topics because they are contemporary. They are about 2024 and beyond. We're thinking about how do we stay innovative and cutting edge and how do we meet the unique needs of our schools and school communities and our scholars in the 2024 and beyond context. So let's dive right in with strategy number one. All right, strategy number one is we wanna to start to showcase and highlight our adaptability to hybrid learning environments. Leveraging the innovative technologies that allow us to bring the teaching and learning experience beyond just the four walls of the classroom, but into the virtual space, into the technology driven world. How do we start to embrace and interact and engage with artificial intelligence and with the innovative technologies that are on the front and cutting edge? And our students, our scholars, they're starting to interact with this outside of the context of education, outside of the classroom. And I would want to ask you and invite you into the conversation around how do we bring AI into the space of inside of our classrooms? How do we start to teach, leverage, and enhance the ability of our educators and our leaders and also of our scholars to embrace these breakthrough technologies that are really going to drive, they're going to drive our economy, they're going to drive our society, they're really going to push us into a different place. And I recognize that sometimes that's a challenge for us because it's a world that we don't know. It's a world that has not fully materialized. It's not fully been understood or adopted, much less adapted to. But I would, I would caution you to, to push back and not want to think through this lens because as an education leader, as a district leader, I'm looking for folks who are thinking this way. I'm looking for people who are embracing these types of technologies, these types of opportunities to expand the opportunities for learning, growth, development, and curiosity. The realities is, is that if we go back to a place of the beginnings of the internet, when we didn't know what it was, when we were worried about what it would be, when we were worried about how it would impact or change our realities as teachers and as leaders, who knew that these years later it would become ubiquitous, utilitarian, where everybody is using it? 
and it just became a part of the way that we do things. I would, I would venture that these hybrid learning environments, these innovative cutting edge technology solutions that are embedded around AI and blockchain and all these new and disruptive technologies is where we are going in 2024 and beyond. And my question to you is how will you position yourself in the interview to think about that, to incorporate that? What recon, what research are you doing to explore these pieces? And if you're already embedded and this is already work that you're doing, I do think you could potentially be a cut above the rest because you're gonna be coming in with a set of assets and a set of resources and skills that other folks are gonna be learning, growing, and quite frankly, becoming comfortable with. So leverage this. If you're ready to go, dig into it even more. And if you're not quite ready, start exposing yourself to it. Start thinking through it, start reading, start exploring, start giving yourself a base of knowledge and understanding to start to be able to think about how this might be a technology, a resource, a strategy, a way of being a professional educator for you as you move forward. Because I think this is gonna enhance your ability to stand out as a candidate as you're interviewing and moving into the education and the educational professional space. So again, think about how you leverage technology and how you adapt to this new kind of virtual learning opportunities that need to be deeply embedded in our educational practices now come into the interview thinking about ways that you might leverage and showcase your ability to adapt these types of technologies. It's gonna give you a leg up. That's strategy number one. All right, so before we move into strategy number two, now it's your turn. Share with us in the comments below, what strategy are you using to incorporate virtual learning, outside of the box technology and innovation that's coming in, whether it be AI or it be blockchain? Like what strategies are you incorporating and are you using? Share that with us in the comments below. And we're going to move into strategy number two. Strategy number two is going to be focused on how do you demonstrate your understanding of the social emotional needs of our scholars? Every candidate should be able to sit in front of that interview panel and talk about the principles of social emotional learning, the social emotional development of students. How are we helping them holistically? The, the total experience of being a student, the academic, the social development, the emotional development, right? These pieces are really, really important. In the context of coming again out of a pandemic when students did not have the same levels of social interactions that we would be accustomed to, they didn't have the ability to thrive and be connected with their friends for a long period of time. And that's had a profound impact. We see it manifesting itself on our campuses. We see it manifesting it throughout our, uh, throughout our communities. And so my question for you is, as you think about your next teaching job, your first teaching job, how are you thinking through the importance of developing the social emotional needs of our students? There's a reasonable expectation that academically you have the tools, the resources, the knowledge, and the expertise to help our students academically. You're content experts. You have the pedagogical approaches. You have the instructional prowess to be able to teach our children. The question is, and what I'm going to challenge you with, is when you come into the interview, can you demonstrate the empathy, the nurturing, the care necessary to meet our students' social and emotional needs because it is not an either or anymore. It is a both and. We need the academic prowess, but we also need people to care about their students. All of them, everyone, the challenging ones, even more so the challenging ones, exploring, expanding, unpacking, building the relationship necessary to have that student be vulnerable, to have that student share the challenges, the trials and tribulations that they may be going through. We as teachers, we as educators, we as professional educators are there to serve our children, serve our kids, serve our community. And that is best done by knowing every, the whole 
the whole kit and caboodle of our kids. Their academic needs, their social needs, their emotional needs. You know, yeah, teaching, being an educator, being in this profession, it, it's not for the faint of heart. We invest our time, we invest our energy, the blood, sweat, and the tears of building our classrooms, building up our schools, building up our school communities. It is a job that needs to be a passion. It is a job where children need to be, they need to be engaged and they need to light up when they see you because they know that you are gonna pour into them. This is at the essence and the core of meeting student social emotional learning needs is that they will become vulnerable and open to learn anything and everything when they know that you care about them, when they know that you are thinking about them as human beings, not just as vessels to receive the academic instruction, but rather to go on this experience of growth, development, and learning together, which includes all those facets. So in the context of 2024, how are you going to showcase your desire and your commitment to knowing, understanding, valuing, and honoring the social and emotional needs of all of your students. That's something that every panel, including any panel that I would be a part of, would be very, very highly interested in. Hearing that from candidates and knowing how those candidates are gonna bring that in to our school community, into our district, into our school. Those are the types of things that we're looking for. So build that in, do your homework, do your research, figure out what those practices are, figure out how it fits with your, your style, figure out if it fits with your personality. Not every single person is gonna approach meeting the social emotional developmental needs of every student the same way. This is very individualized. For folks who are introverts, but teachers, they might approach it very different than folks who are extroverts in our teachers, right? All of that can be individualized, but your commitment your commitment to meeting the social emotional needs of students is the most important piece because then you can make it your own and then it becomes authentic and it becomes something that kids can grab onto and be a part of and know that they're in a nurturing, honorable environment where they can take risk academically and they can learn and grow alongside you. So showcase your ability to really highlight the needs for social emotional development in all of your students. That's strategy number two. All right, strategy number three. As candidates, you're gonna to wanna to demonstrate your cultural competency and your equity awareness. In an increasingly diverse community and society, it's gonna be important to be able to honor and value all of the diverse backgrounds, all the diverse people that are in and around our school communities. As a professional educator, it is gonna be your responsibility to be able to showcase how you have thought about issues around diversity, equity, inclusion, inclusivity. These are things that are gonna be really, really important as we continue to grow and develop communities that have cultural awareness and cultural competency, that know and understand and value the historic backgrounds, the historic contributions of different people of different races, of different ethnicities, of different cultures. Your ability to showcase and highlight that is really, really important in the context of 2024 and beyond. We're gonna to continue to be an increasingly diverse community, an increasingly diverse society, and the more we embrace these principles and embrace these values, the better off our students and their experiences will be. So you wanna think through how you showcase and highlight your knowledge, your experience, and your expertise in developing diverse communities, diverse students, diverse perspectives, how you're gonna showcase and highlight your commitment to equity and creating equity-based outcomes by meeting the individualized needs of all of your students and how to be inclusive. How to be inclusive of different perspectives, different backgrounds, different mindsets, because that diversity, equity, and inclusion is what is going to build a rich, vibrant community where people can feel valued, where people can know that their heritage and their backgrounds are valued and recognized and honored. These are the types of things, again, as school leaders that we are looking for in 2024 and beyond. 
these are the realities of who we are. These are the realities of where we need to go in public education, at least in one humble leader's opinion and experience. So as you think through these things, these are the, these are the mindsets. These are the strategies that are going to help you stand out because you're going to be thinking about these contemporary and very, very relevant issues and topics. So if you like this video, check out this video because this is going to help you also in your 2024 experience of interviewing and being prepared to be a professional educator. All right. And also, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I tell you, only 19% of our viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you've gotten to this point in the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so we could be at the top of your feed and we can share with you all our newest information and newest content. And thank you for everything that you do. Check out this next video. It's going to be really, really good. It's going to help you on your educational journey as well. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Be well.